Kia ora tato. Uh, I was introduced to one of the guests here. Uh, well, apparently I'd been introduced before I got here by Matthew, and when I met her, she said, oh, you're the resident rabble rouser. Uh, so that's my preferred title today, <laughs> the resident rabble rouser. And uh, I'm here to talk about social change in New Zealand, and I'm going to use as a framework for that something called Te Tangata, which is... Um, uh, a project we've been working on at Action Station over the past year, and it is a people's agenda for Aotearoa New Zealand, um, a crowdsourced vision for the future of our country, the values that uh, we need to commit to in order to achieve that vision, and some of the policies and pathways that could get us there. Now, to be really clear, it is a people's agenda. It is not the people's agenda, and we'll talk a little bit about, more about whose agenda this is and whose agenda it is not. Um, but let's also first talk about why. Why did we do this? So, for the past three years, uh, this movement called Action Station uh, has been growing. Three years ago we launched not long before the last election. We were a very small community. Uh, I think the, our mailing list had less than 2,000 people on it of um, pretty committed people who had seen the growing power around the world of uh, digitally connected movements of citizens who shared certain core values and who had decided to reclaim their political power outside of the parliamentary political party system as citizens uh, and to take action together in collective ways to hold um, traditional sources of power to account and to, to ensure that they were acting in the interest of everyday people and the planet that we love. But over the course of the past three years, we've spent a lot of our time and energy resisting what appeared to us to be harmful change. And although that's important work, and uh, there will also always need to be people willing to stand in the place of resistance, we felt a real uh, uprising in our movement and our community of a desire to move from resisting into reimagining and rebuilding and saying, well, what is the future we do want? What would it look like and how do we build that together? Secondly, uh, we could see that it was time to re-shift the boundaries of what's possible. And in particular, we mean the boundaries of what's politically possible in this country. There's something um, that we see in political discourse, which is there's a kind of an acceptable window within which the policies that fall within that window, uh, you're allowed to talk about them in the political sphere and be taken seriously. And things that fall outside of that window, it's very hard for politicians to take up those topics without being uh, discredited. Um, so that's the role of us as, as, a, as a people's movement is to find ways to shift that window and to create more space for conversations about what's possible. And finally, we wanted to rewrite the rules. Politics in New Zealand has for too long been the domain of the few, uh, and we want to recreate a politics of the many, where many, many, many people in this country feel politically powerful, politically motivated and connected in a way that they get engaged. So that's the why. Uh, the next question is the who. Whose people's agenda is this? So just to reiterate, we have called it a people's agenda for Aotearoa New Zealand. We are not claiming it to be the agenda. About 400,000 New Zealanders have participated in actions together with us over the past three years. So it's a fairly sizable community of interest we've been learning from, talking to, listening to and drawing from. Uh, about 50,000 people participated in a series of, of surveys over the course of the past three years, identifying priorities, what issues did they want to see the most progress on in New Zealand and how did they want to see that progress. We are a relatively broad tent. We know that we have members of the Action Station community who vote right across the political spectrum and people who choose not to vote. So there's a fairly broad tent. But there are certain core values that as a movement we've kind of, that we've committed to. So we are committed, for example, to a future in which Te Tiriti o Waitangi is restored to a place of honour in New Zealand. We're committed to a, a future of decolonisation and indigenisation of culture in New Zealand. We're committed to a transparent and a accountable democracy. That's a, that's a given within the Kawanatanga sphere at least. Uh, we're committed to human rights. So you can't come to us with a campaign proposal that would diminish somebody else's rights. We're committed to economic fairness and we're committed to a flourishing planet where life, all forms of life can live well. So that's what we're committed to. Um, so this is the agenda of that community of people in New Zealand. We don't claim to speak for everybody, but there's a lot of really hopeful people who've had their say. 
how did we develop the agenda? So we took all of those like 50,000 uh, responses to surveys. We came up with a structured conversation plan, sort of a map for how to talk about those issues that was completely driven by stories. So we worked to come up with stories on a range of issues and then people hosted dinners all around New Zealand. Um, and those dinners, some of them took place in uh, you know, beautiful, appointed, well-appointed family homes. Some of them took place in student flats. Some of them took place in McDonald's in Gisborne. Um, they didn't send us a photo, which I was really sad about because I was like, <laughs> I want a photo of that one. And they came together and they talked about um, the values that they shared, the vision that they held for the future of New Zealand and how they thought we might be able to get there. And they did that, as I say, in the context of, of grounded stories that represented real experiences that people in New Zealand were having today. So why did we concentrate first on values? Firstly, this is something that, um, is, uh, that, we, can that we have learnt from Te Kanga Māori, uh, that if we don't start our conversation by grounding it in, in the values that we share, then even a really technically sound solution that isn't aligned with those values can end up taking us to a place that isn't the place we thought we wanted to go to. So we need to know what our values are and then we can go back and say, is this policy or pathway truly aligned with those values? But having a conversation about values also gives us a place to find common ground to start from and a place from which to act together. And so this was a quote uh, that somebody found, uh, they, I think they found it kind of um, really refreshing to start the conversation from values rather than from problems or from solutions. So we uh, used a, a process that draw, drew on research that has uh, been done by researchers around the world around, uh, around global values and we used a technique, a discussion based technique to have people talk about which of those values they thought were most important to replace at the centre of government decision making and public life. So this wasn't saying what are the values we need to put at the heart of our family life, that's a, that's a really important conversation, but it wasn't the question we asked. So if you know that we asked people, what do you think are the values that need to be put at the absolute heart of government decision making to get us to where you want our country to be by 2040? What are the values that you think people might have put emphasis on? Fiscal responsibility maybe? Or innovation? The first one was aroha. People want decisions in our country made by our government to be grounded in a principle of love and compassion for all people and without discrimination. So that opens up a really new way of acting as government uh, in relation to people in our country. The second one is this kaitiakitanga. Uh, which one way of expressing that is custodianship, the care and responsibility that we take for taonga, the things that we treasure, and that includes our culture, our language, our people, and nature. And this was very, very important to almost everybody who took part in, in this discussion, and it was one of the most commonly prioritised values uh, in the survey. And they want that to be at the absolute heart of government decision making. The next was, unsurprisingly, equality and fairness. Uh, th these are values that are held very dear to uh, the culture, uh, sort of dominant culture in New Zealand. And uh, we expressed it in, in the survey as that equality together with fairness recognises different starting points and pathways to enjoying the same rights and freedoms. So this covered off not just ensuring that people have an equal right to live freely in our country, uh, whatever their differences, but also that they have access to the core essential services they need to live an e a life of equal dignity uh, and, uh, and creativity. Manakitanga, uh, which was expressed in the survey as hospitality, kindness, respect, generosity and care for others without expecting anything in return. And this is one that we had really, really beautiful and exciting conversations about what would government policy look like if this was actually how we approached people through the Ministry of Social Development or if in our justice, in our criminal justice system. And we, uh, we discovered that New Zealanders have a real appetite for more compassion, more care and more ger generosity. And finally, but certainly not least, um, and there were many more values that were prioritised by people, so these are not the only values that matter to people, these are the ones that were most commonly selected 
as being of importance. And this was community and belonging, togetherness with the purpose of mutual care, support and creative enhancement. And so this one, one of the other major themes that emerged from these conversations is that people wanted to be dealt with less as individuals and more as collectives and communities. They wanted to, uh, to think about life in New Zealand less in an individualistic way and more in a connected community way. So those were the, the values that were prioritised. And then from those, pri those uh, values, people were asked to talk about how would New Zealand look different in 2040 if these values were really at the heart of how, we, uh, how government was making its decisions. And from that process, we ended up with nine vision statements. And at the top of that was um, honouring Te Tiriti o Waitangi, uh, inclusive and diverse community and equality and fairness. So honouring Te Tiriti o Waitangi, the, the, um, the vision statement that emerged from those conversations encompassed um, not just the transformation of our institutions in this country in a way that would fully honour Te Tiriti o Waitangi, but also ensuring that every person in New Zealand actually understands what that means for them in this country in a way that they also understand our history. And I think there's a growing appetite, particularly amongst young people, to have a better understanding of, of the, both the, the pre-colonial and colonial history of New Zealand, and that that would enable people to participate actively in the process of decolonisation uh, in New Zealand. Inclusive communities, um, I won't say too much about that, it's, it's important, but um, in the equality and fairness, it was a really strong emphasis on ensuring that people had access to housing as a kind of housing first model. Uh, and then the uh, three of the other big um, values were shared power. And it was kind of exciting to hear the talk about blockchain um, because there's sort of so many incredible opportunities to distribute and share power. Um, and this is something people have identified as a top priority if we're going to get to the place we want to be in this country by 2040. We can't have as much power being held by so few people over so many others. Um, so more distributed power. And um, the other one was justice for all, and this is my personal passion, so I'm throwing it in here, um, that we, uh, my vision for 2040 is that we don't have any prisons anymore. Um, we have a few, you know, maybe secure wellness centres, um, <laughs> but no prisons, decarcerisation, uh, de decarceration is, uh, is got to be a priority if we're going to honour the Te Tiriti o Waitangi in, in New Zealand. So, but there was a lot of support for that. And what we found is that when you gave people a story of a young person in our justice system, their response to that story was compassion. Whereas their response to a news item about somebody committing a crime is often fear. And so there's a real opportunity there to have a different kind of conversation. And then finally, I've, and, and certainly not least, um, people want flourishing planet. And what they want is for the, all forms of life and the, like the future flourishing of all forms of life to be at the heart of government decision making. And that was the vision statement that people prioritised. So what was interesting to us is that we sent these vision statements out to all the political parties. There were nine of them in total, there's a few more that aren't here. And we asked them to signal how much they agreed or disagreed with each vision statement. Uh, ACT didn't respond to the survey, but every other political party that was running candidates in this election responded, and all of them either agreed or strongly agreed with all of the vision statements. Right? So, exactly. So, if that is true, and I choose to take them at their word, because it gives me a basis from which to hold them accountable, um, <laughs> if it is true that every political party in New Zealand either strongly or it agrees or strongly agrees with all those vision statements, why? for 30 years, for the past 30 years at least, because that's how long I've been really engaged in this work, have governments of various colours and stripes failed so completely to reduce inequality and poverty in this country? Why have they failed to prevent the pollution and degradation of our natural taonga? If they say that they are strongly in agreement that that should be a priority. There's many different possible answers to that. The most cynical one is that they actually don't agree with those visions and they just like filled out the survey and said, you know, let's tell action station members we think that and see if they'll vote for us. Um, but the less cynical version is they do agree, but they're stuck in an old story about how you manage a country for economic growth. And so what we need, the next step 
I believe, is to reclaim the space that has been stolen from us. That the emphasis for so many generations in this country on privatisation, on individualisation, on competition, corporation, even, quite frankly, on social enterprise over social community and on social investment over social connection and care, we have to reclaim that space. We have to say, we are not going to allow you to define the, the limits of what government care is in this realm of fiscal responsibility. We're going to say, these are the values that we hold. We want you to hold them. And together, we're calling on the government, opening up the window to them and saying, it's OK to say we're going to actually ground our social policies in love in generosity, in manaakitanga, in whakawhanaungatanga, we're going to shut down prisons. Like, they need to know that the people of New Zealand are ready for that and that we want it. And that what we're asking for is more community, more care, more connection, more creativity, and more compassion from our government. And so that's where social change is going to be coming from in the next, I say, in the next 10, 20, 30 years, will be in refusing to let those ideas of, of competition, privatisation, and market-driven sort of notions of who we are as humans take uh, precedence over what we actually all know and what we discover when we sit together around a di dinner table, which is that that's not what we care about most. And that's not really how we believe change happens. So that's, uh, that's where Action Station's going for the next three years. Uh, if you want to be with us, come along. And I just absolutely have to thank and acknowledge um, the photographers who provide us with the beautiful images there. So thanks for your time. <laughs>